Hello family, we thank God for his mercy. We give him glory for all he's done for us. Today I want to share the message we are not to vilify the name of God. And I am going to be reading Leviticus chapter 24 from verse 1 to verse 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel to bring to you clear oil from beaten olives for the light of the golden lampstand, to make a lamp burn continually outside the veil of the testimony between the holy place and the most holy place in the tent of meeting. Aaron shall always keep the lamps burning before the Lord from evening until morning. It shall be a permanent statute throughout your generations. He shall keep the lamps burning on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. Then you shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes, bread of the presence, showbread with it. Two tenths of an ephah shall be in each cake loaf. You shall set the bread of the presence, showbread in two rows, six in a row on the pure gold table before the Lord. You shall put pure frankincense in two censers, one beside each other, so that it may be with the bread as a memorial portion, an offering by fire to the Lord. Every Sabbath day, Aaron shall arrange the showbread before the Lord continually. It is an everlasting covenant for the Israelites. The bread of the presence shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it in a sacred place. For it is for Aaron a most holy portion of the offerings by fire to the Lord, his portion forever. From verse 10, it says, Now the son of an Israelite woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the Israelites, and he and a man of Israel quarreled and struggled with each other in the camp. The Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. So they brought him to Moses. Now his mother's name was Shelomith, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. They put him in custody until the will and command of the Lord might be made clear to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Bring the one who has cursed the Lord outside the camp, and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head as witnesses to his guilt. Then let all the congregation stone him. You shall speak to the Israelites, saying, Whoever curses his God will bear his sin through his own death. Further, the one who blasphemes the name of the Lord shall most certainly be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him. The stranger, as well as the native born, shall be put to death when he blasphemes the name of the Lord. This is what had transpired in this passage of scripture. Two different things. One, God giving specific instructions concerning what was supposed to be used to prepare the lamp that was meant to be in the tabernacle. And God had given a bit more details about the bread of the presence that was supposed to be also placed within the tabernacle. And I'm not focusing on that today because I shared that a couple of um, weeks back when we were going through the various instructions God had given to Moses in regards to how the tabernacle was to be built and apportioned um, into the various sections and what was supposed to be contained in there. So I'd covered um, the showbread and um, the lamp at that point. So today my focus really is on this story of we're told it's an Israelite woman and a father who was an Egyptian. And as far as I know, from the time we started going through Genesis up until now, this is the first time, and it never even crossed my mind, where we get an indication that when the people of Israel were in Egypt, that there was the likelihood that there was intermarriage, or if there wasn't intermarriage, at least children had been born between Israelites um, and and um, the Egyptians. In other words, a bit like this scenario is giving us, where he's this son was of mixed heritage, half Egyptian and half um, Israelite. But the Bible doesn't tell us his name. It just tells us that he 
gets into a quarrel with a fellow Israelite. And when he gets into this quarrel and there's a struggle, for some reason, which again, the Bible doesn't tell us, this son who would have observed all that God had done for the people of Israel in bringing them out of the land of slavery. And even if he didn't observe it, because again, we don't know how old he, he was at the time of this incident. Even if he wasn't, he would have heard, he would have been told of what God had done for the generations before him in bringing them out of slavery from the land of Egypt and that they were en route to the promised land. For whatever reason, despite the chances that he would have heard, he would have heard Moses being their leader, knowing that he was the one who was directing them in accordance to the will of God, in accordance to the instructions that he was receiving from God. The Bible says that this son decided to blaspheme me. And I like the Amplified. It says, and to curse the name of the Lord. I did a bit of study and I came across the fact that in Hebrew, there is no word for blasphemy. And so I want us to focus on the word cursed because we all know what a curse is. And we also understand what it means to vilify um, a person or a thing. And that is why I wanted to use that word, even as far as today's message is concerned. Because it says to vilify means to speak or write about in an abusively disparaging manner. It also means to say or write unpleasant things about someone or something in order to cause other people to have a bad opinion of that person or thing. So in other words, this son of this Israeli, Israelite woman decided that he was going to say all manner of things about Almighty God, Yahweh. And we had looked at the fact that the name of God, Yahweh, was so sacred to the people that they did not even mention that name anyhow. And so even in scripture, we had looked at the fact that whenever we see the word Lord spelt in capital, it stands for Yahweh because God's name is so sacred that Yahweh, that we use the word Lord. And this son decides that he's going to curse God because he had a quarrel with another Israelite. And the Bible says that they then decided to put, keep him somewhere until they heard what God would say they were to do with him. And I believe that it was because Moses, who was leading them, had had all these various laws that we've been going through in the past few weeks. God had been speaking to them, saying different things. They are not to take the name of the Lord in vain. They are to treat one another well and so on. Various laws that God had given them. And so maybe they came upon this situation. It had happened for the very first time. And they knew that the circumstances surrounding the fact that God's name had even been mentioned. Something bad had been said about God's name was a grievous sin. But they didn't want to take matters into their own hands. So the Bible says, God's counsel was sought. And what God says they were to do was to stone that person, was to kill him. And you and I or somebody might think that was a very harsh punishment. But God, I believe, was saying that he, this is how reverent his name is. We cannot take his name and abuse and, and rain curses on Almighty God. The same God who tells us that we should not even curse our mother and our father. If we curse our mother and our father, it is a grievous sin. How much more cursing Almighty God, the one in whom we live and move and have our being, the breath we have, it is because God gave it to us. And I believe that God, who is a just and righteous God, who didn't want the people to be contaminated with sin and for them to take lightly the laws that he was giving them said that they were to stone this man and he died. And the Bible says that as far as God was concerned, his guilt was on his own head because he himself had chosen 
to do what he had done. What do we learn from this passage of scripture? That we are to hold in high esteem. Almighty God. Everything about Almighty God. His name. His essence. Who he is. His character. Every attribute we know of God. We are to hold with the greatest honour in our hearts. And we are also not to be those who go about cursing the name of the Lord or vilifying the name of God and causing people to have a different opinion about who Almighty God is with the intention of discrediting God before other people. The thing with this is that sometimes it can happen in subtle ways and we don't even realize that maybe we're vilifying the name of God. When other people are around you and maybe they are not believers and they are speaking about Almighty God and saying all kinds of unpleasant things about Almighty God, what do you do when you're in the presence of such people? Do you keep quiet? Do you say nothing? Do you just walk away? and consent because you're thinking well I'm not the one who said it it is the opinion sometimes we can actually commit a sin and I think I've shared this in a previous podcast before just by being present when certain things are being done and so let us ask almighty God to help us to honor him to give him the highest honor we can ever give to anybody and to honor his name. Because fast forward in the New Testament, we're told that we're not to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And we know the Spirit, Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And so our attitude, our actions towards Almighty God, towards his name, we need to be keeping check of how we use the name of God, what we say about him. Particularly sometimes in our people's anger, when maybe you feel God has not dealt favorably with you, it is in moments like that that people sometimes lose their guard and they begin to say all sorts of things because maybe they feel that God has not shown them love or has not been there for them. In our generation, it may, we know that God is not, doesn't cause people to be killed physically like he did back then in the New Testament, Old Testament times rather, because of the fact that we're living in the dispensation of grace. But let's remember that the Bible says that there are so many people who are physically, they are alive, but they are spiritually dead. And to be spiritually dead is a separation from God. So could it be that in our day, there are so many people who are acting just like the son acted. And they're spiritually dead. They have no part in God. The face of God has been turned away from them. The grace of God is not over their lives. But because they are physically active and going about their business, we think all is well with them. But in the spirit realm, they are probably spiritually dead. And the God has turned his face. The heavens has become like brass. They pray and their prayer doesn't even go anywhere. Because God has set his face against them. We do not want to be like that. And neither do we want our children, our spouses, our family members, our friends, our loved ones to encounter that. So if at any point in time you come across a situation where somebody for whatever reason, particularly if they're a believer, and they begin to say things that you kind of think, hold on a minute, you're going off tangent, you're going overboard. Let us be those who speak the truth and rein those people back in to let them know that they cannot go beyond a certain boundary. Because as I say, they may still have life, but the consequences of that action could span their lifetime and even generations and some people, it could even cost them the opportunity 